Hey, Brendan here from WP Speed Fix. In this video, I want to talk to you about speeding up or optimizing WordPress speed without plugins. We have this post on our website. I will talk you through it. We get a lot of traffic to a lot of questions about it. Um, so let's get into it. So there's probably two reasons you want to speed up your, your site without plugins. The first is you might have an aversion to adding more plugins to a site. We get this a lot. Um, this kind of people are allergic to plugins and plugins aren't bad. Um, you know, they're just code basically. So um, we get a lot of inquiries through at WP Speed Fix, people saying they have 50 plugins or 80 plugins or whatever, and that's why the site is slow. And that's not necessarily true. Um, for sure, every plugin adds code to the site, but um, if you're kind of have a fear of adding more plugins to a site, then, then don't be, especially optimization plugins. Um, the net gain is worth it in 99% of cases. So long as you use quality plugins, um, there are a lot of crap plugins out there. So there are plugins that will absolutely cause problems or slow things down. Um, the other reason why you might not want to add plugins is because you can't, you don't have access to it or, you know, for some reason you're in an environment where, you know, adding plugins is just not possible. So those are probably the two reasons why someone wants to optimize the site without plugins. But let's get into it. There's a lot of points here and I'll just talk about the nuance of those. So it goes without saying, use a good host, but we see this again and again, people asking for speed optimization advice and they're on a crappy host. There's a lot of reasons why good hosting is better than slow hosting. But in terms of speed stuff, like let's talk about pure speed of a website. So one is raw performance. So a good host will outperform a crap host. And I talk about this all the time. The difference between a good host and a bad host in terms of price isn't much. It's the cost, the difference between the cost of a cup of coffee versus the price of a nice lunch. So the cost is nothing. Like from a commercial perspective, if you're running a business website, there's no, you know, $50 a month is, not, you know, there's no difference between $50 a month and $2 a month, basically. There's not going to hurt the business spending an appropriate amount of money on hosting. Um, there is a huge op opportunity cost to slow hosting. So particularly if you're using a WooCommerce site and you have staff in the back end, managing orders, managing products, that sort of thing, you're losing what you might gain in cost, you're gonna lose in, you know, just users sitting there waiting for things to load. So you wanna have good hosting. We typically re recommend Cloudways, Cways.net. Um, in terms of price per performance, it's probably the best on the web right now. There's certainly a lot of hosts out there, but you know, if you're talking about raw speed, Cloudways is the way to go. So Cways.net. There's also some other reasons why you want to look at hosting. Um, one of them is um, HTTP2 protocol support. And you know, before you go making a bunch of changes, actually, I should say that up front, there's, you probably want to start with diagnosing what the root cause of your speed or slowdowns is first. We see a common problem with speed optimizations where people just randomly go and install a bunch of plugins and a bunch of tools and just kind of like stabbing in the dark to see if it's faster or not. They really have no measurement in place to know if it's faster. They're running PageSpeed Insights and there's really no other tool in place to track the speed. So there's a few things kind of starting points I'd say before making any changes here. So on our website, wpspeedfix.com, we have free tools here. So one is this free Core Vitals report. This will give you an overview of how your site's performing right now. This is the data Google has on your site speed. So this is the speed that actually matters, the data that matters. So this report's free, it takes 60 seconds to generate. There's no opt-in required. So check that out. That'll tell you what metrics are actually slow. Often we see people run a Google PageSpeed Insights test and then they assume their entire site's slow. But this is the real speed. So Core Vitals data is picked from real users on Google Chrome and is the actual speed of the website. So if this report says you're fast, your site's fast. So just keep that in mind. The other one is our free speed test tool here, Site Speed Bot. This takes about 90 seconds to run. It will give you detailed recommendations on site speed. It'll tell you if you have a problem with the HTTP2 protocol support or you're missing a content delivery network or missing lazy loading. It'll actually tell you. It, it'll give you be better recommendations than half the developers on the web. So check that out. That's also free, no opt-in required. And then if you want a paid solution here, we have this tool called Vital Signs Tracker. So one problem we have with Core Vitals data from Google is that it's based on a 28-day average. So it takes a long time to see improvements come through. And then also it's not very specific. It's not page level. It's not very precise. So we can't open up that Core Vitals report and know exactly what page is slow or where 
the site is slow. With Core Vitals, we built it, or sorry, with Vital Science Tracker, we built this to solve this problem. So we're tracking the speed of every user session. We can run reports on it. You can put install it today and be running reports tomorrow on the data or even today. Um, and it'll give page by page level um, breakdown of the speed here. It'll give you lots of different reports. And basically, it'll show you where the site is slow. Um, so if you check that out, there's a video here on the Vital Science Tracker page as well. That's under the services menu. So start there. Start by diagnosing the problem, not throwing random solutions at you know in the dark um, so anyway so let's get back to it so good hosting so that's important next one is using HTTPS we still see sites that are not running in secure mode um, so using HTTPS and also making sure you've got a single redirect from all the variations of your web address so what I mean by that is there's one step to go from the HTTP to HTTPS version and if you're running the URL with the www like we are you'll see there www.p speed fix there's one jump to go from w from no www to www so when you have two or three steps there for those redirects that is slow so make sure there's single redirect to the actual web address from those alternatives and then it's not an article we need to update it but i just have a note here to turn on hsts so what this does, this forces the browser to only use secure mode when accessing the site. So HTTPS kind of sort of does this, but this is a more strict version of it. And the reason why this will help speed up the site is the second time someone comes back to the site, their browser will automatically only use HTTPS, even if you type HTTP into the browser bar. So it'll make second visits faster as well, and it makes the site more secure. So enable that. You can enable that if you're using Cloudflare. You can enable that in there, or you can enable it on the hosting. But that will speed things up as well, especially for repeat visitors. So use HTTPS, use HSTS. Hey, um, and just a note here that the HTTP2 protocol doesn't work unless you're using HTTPS secure mode. So basically there's three protocols, version 1.1, version 2, and version 3. There's a big jump from version 1.1 to version 2. So the site will be 50 to 100% faster using HTTP2. If you use our speed test tool, it will tell you whether your site, your hosting supports this protocol. It's been around since 2015. So if your hosting doesn't support it, that's a problem. Um, probably the first step is to log a support ticket with them and ask them to fix it. And if they don't or can't, then move to a better host. So. That's HTTPS, HSTS. The next one, use the highest version of PHP the site supports. This goes without saying, but PHP is the underlying programming language that WordPress runs on, and every version of PHP is faster than the last one. So you want to use the highest version that the site supports. Right now, 8.3 is the highest. So every version is 10 to 20% faster. So you want the highest version your site supports without breaking things. There is a free compatibility plugin. You'll see here there's a note. WP Engine have built this plugin. Um, you can run it on any host. It doesn't have to be WP Engine. Test this. This is a developer level change. Just don't go randomly changing it yourself. You'll probably break things. But the higher version, the higher the version of PHP, the faster the, the site's going to go. Okay, use Cloudflare. So Cloudflare is a content delivery now. Uh, content delivery network cloudflare does a whole bunch of other things so it also does dns hosting it is one of the fastest dns hosts in the world um, this website dnsperf.com linked from the article ranks the speed that continually tests dns hosting providers and ranks their speed and cloudflare is, for the last five plus years has always been in the top three so it's one of the fastest dns hosts worldwide so it'll make the site faster because the dns hosting is faster it also has a firewall and security um, we have this blog post here that talks about securing WordPress, um, basically blocking malicious traffic using some custom Cloudflare rules, particularly brute force attacks. So it's really good at doing that. Um, and then also it has some paid plans available. So the page plan, paid plans can do a lot for speed. So the $5 a month service effectively does page caching on its network. So if you can't install a caching plugin for some reason, then... <coughs> excuse me this might be your solution and then the i think this plan is now 25 bucks a month um it it also so the the higher paid plan has things like image optimization lazy loading and basically a bunch of speed optimizations including something called speculation rules or speculative lo speculative loading that will also help speed up the site um just talking about speculative loading um 
here is a script that you might want to add if you can't use plugins let me just try and load this properly um, check out this site instant.page what this script does it adds just in time um, preloading capability to your site and there's kind of a demo here basically there's a gap between when you hover and click and in that gap that time gap the what this script does or what this tool does is it starts background loading the page that you're hovering over or the link that you're hovering over so it'll speed things up substantially because you see there there was a nearly two second delay from when i hovered to clicked so that's worth adding if you can't add a plugin but you can add code that might be a solution there for you as well and that does just in time preloading it's different to speculative preloading or speculation rules which cloudflare can do it's a different type of preloading but you definitely want to turn that on inside Cloudflare as well. Um, so that's those. Oh yeah, we talked about instant page there. Uh, okay, turn on speed optimizations to a theme. So most themes have speed optimizations. So check your theme settings and just see what's in there and turn on the optimizations if if they're appropriate. So if, as long as you're not doubling up an optimization as well, you never want to use two optimizations that do the same thing, like two content delivery networks, for example, which is something we see a lot. So turn on speed optimizations in your theme. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, compressing images before you upload them. So that's an easy one. There's a bunch of different compression tools you can download that are free. We use one called, I think it's Image Optin. Uh, what is it? Image Optin, like that. <coughs> Completely free. Um, this is for MacOS, but um, there's a bunch of tools like that as well. So just compress the images before uploading them. Um, this one is a simple one here, um, making sure your database is using InnoDB storage engine instead of the older MyISAM. Um, we have this blog post, uh, um, one sec, I'll just find it. We have this WordPress, we have this post um, about speeding up WordPress database and if you go to point six here, it has a more detailed explanation about the difference between these two database formats. So with the older format MyISAM, Basically, when something's writing to the database, that database table is completely locked. It's like having an Excel spreadsheet that only one person can edit at a time. This newer format, InnoDB, only the row in that database is locked. So it's kind of like a Google Sheet where multiple people can edit it at once. So if you're using that older storage format, if you have an old website, you most likely will be. And you get a significant speed boost by using the newer format. So there is a plugin, Serbol Optimizer, that we use. I know <coughs> you don't want to use more plugins, but you can install this, run the optimization, then delete it. Um, so it's a one-time optimization. Or you can run those that optimization inside PHP My Admin. That's the other way to do it. I won't give you the commands here because it's kind of a developer level thing, and you <coughs> you probably shouldn't be DIYing it, but if you can't install plugins, then run it in the database. PHP My Admin, you can do that same optimization. These other ones are pretty straightforward. Getting rid of any plugins that you're not using, so doing a plugin and code audit as well. Often we see tracking codes added to websites that you know the tools no longer use or not being paid for, and it's erroring out and making things slow. So making sure that you audit all the plugins and all the code, your third-party code, and just getting rid of anything that's not being used anymore. Pretty straightforward. Moving that code to Google Tag Manager will also help. So inside Google Tag Manager, there's a bunch of different ways to fire tags or code. If you use the code, the tag, the trigger, sorry, window loaded, it will make the code faster. Basically, it doesn't load the code until the page is finished loading. So it'll make the page loads faster and it'll load the script maybe one second later. <coughs> For which most code, it makes no tangible difference to the website, especially marketing code. Similarly, moving any code you have on the site to the footer will also speed it up. So JavaScript code is executed top to bottom. So the further the code is, particularly marketing code, if it's at the bottom of the site, it gets executed later. So again, it will make things faster. You don't need your analytics to fire straight away. It can wait a second. You want to give preference to the page rendering as opposed to analytics code or marketing code firing. So moving the code lower in the page also helps. So moving it from the head to the footer that will also make a difference, but you'll get an even better result using Google Tag Manager with this window loaded trigger. And the last one, fixing 404 errors. We see this all the time, sites that have <coughs> a 404 error on the footer. So it's a site-wide 404. Basically, it's happening on every page. 
And the problem with that is the browser doesn't know what to do with it. So the browser often freezes. It's like a two, three second lag when the page is loading. It just kind of freezes and then starts loading again. So fixing 404 errors, they're bad for speed. They're bad for SEO. And the simplest way to do that is run an SEO audit tool and then just go and fix the error. It's pretty straightforward. So that's pretty much it um, for this post. It's pretty straightforward. So probably the big wins are using something like Cloudflare. Um, it's not an easy change if you're a big organization. So keep that in mind. It's a big change, particularly moving DNS hosting. So um, if you have an IT support company, they're going to need to be involved. So just keep that in mind. But a lot of optimizations, if we have a CMS that's not WordPress, for example, that doesn't have speed optimization features or functionality or capability, we use Cloudflare and can do a lot with that as well. Um, and the same with Google Tag Manager. We can do a lot of optimization, optimizing code using Google Tag Manager. So those are probably, as well as fixing 404s, but Google Tag Manager and Cloudflare are probably two big ways to optimize the site. But again, coming back to the start, if you're hesitant, if you're kind of allergic to plugins and you don't want to install them because you don't want more plugins, that's probably false economy because installing a caching plugin and an image optimization plugin, you'll get a net gain in speed. So keep that in mind. But that's it for this video. If you want speed help, come to our website. If you want someone to do it for you, request a free audit on our homepage and we'll come back to you and tell you how we can help. I already shared those other two tools. So a free site speed test, a free core vitals report. Those would be two other ways to get started. There's no opt-in required for those. The same way we have a free SEO audit tool as well. So those are a few ways you can kind of dig in and kind of troubleshoot yourself and, and get moving forward. If you have any questions about this video, post in the comments. Happy to hear from you and we'll come back to you there. Cheers.